Hello and welcome to Quality of Life. I'm your host, Dave Augustine, and I'm honored today that our guest is Chief Mike Romas of the Sheboygan Fire Department. I invited Chief Romas to talk about the services provided by the Sheboygan Fire Department and the level of training maintained by the members of the department, all of which affect the quality of life in our community. Welcome, Chief Romas. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for having me. You bet. Um, where I'd like to start out with, Chief, is you're fairly new to the fire department in the city. Mm -hmm. Could you give us a background of you know, your training and your experience in fire? Absolutely. Um, I have over 30 years of service in the fire department. I, I originally was born and raised in Milwaukee, lived there my entire life. I spent just over 30 years with the Milwaukee Fire Department. Um, started out as a firefighter, you know, worked my way up, a driver, a lieutenant, a captain, battalion chief, deputy chief, assistant chief. <laughs> and then um, I was fortunate enough to be hired by Sheboygan as their fire chief. So I'm excited to be here. And that's really where I came from. Um, always been involved in community service my whole life. I was a lifeguard for many years on Lake Michigan. That's another reason I wanted to come to Sheboygan because oh, nice. I love Lake Michigan. I love that, that part of it. And you just, uh, just like in Milwaukee, you look east and there's the lake. So I feel like I'm somewhat home here. Excellent. Well, on behalf of Sheboygan, the community, and the city of Sheboygan, welcome, Chief, to your position. It's yeah. great having you. Yeah, great. Thank you. With the Sheboygan Fire Department, what is the basic makeup or structure of it? Meaning, you know, its locations, you know, the types of equipment in each location, <clears> the <throat> stations. If you could kind of give us a summary or a view of, you know, how that sits. Sure, absolutely. Uh, we're fortunate to have five fire stations in the city, and that uh, reduces our response time for uh, whatever it is that the citizen needs. So that's, that's critical in this area. Uh, Sheboygan is obviously built up along Lake Michigan, so it's long and it's narrow. Um, so we have those fire stations scattered north to south throughout the city. Um, we have engines, trucks, paramedic units, and some other uh, extra equipment. A fire engine uh, is uh, basically the people that go inside the building. They have the water and the hose. Now, they have other things, but mm -hmm. I'm just trying to keep Basics, it simple. Correct. Right. Thank you. Uh, the fire department's like a, a football team. I like to equate it to a football team. Um, and we have the engine and the truck, like there's the offense and the defense. And the engine, like I said before, has the water and holes, and they go inside and put the fire out. They put the wet stuff mm -hmm. on the red stuff, as we say. Nice. And then the truck companies, um, we call those our toolboxes. And uh, a truck is the one with the big area ladder on top. And it's, uh, it has a pipe, a pre-piped waterway so we can use that for bigger buildings or things that are set back that we need to get water to. Mm -hmm. And um, the truck company supports the engine company in that um, they create openings for us um, above to make sure that we can get inside. Um, it takes the heat and the smoke away from the fire and allows firefighters to get in. Um, they have extra tools. There are forcible entry experts. So we really do have two different things going on at a fire, basically. There's a lot of things going on sure. at a fire, but those are the two basic things. So we have engines and trucks, and of course, um, I know that people in this community know about the paramedic units, and we have uh, three of those, and uh, they're stationed throughout the city, um, you know, one mm -hmm. north, one south, and one in the middle, and 78% uh, of our runs are um, EMS, a either BLS or ALS related. So. Uh, the citizens of Sheboygan have excellent care. We have 32 paramedics in the city, and uh, the, so the training level, uh, the certification level is very high when it comes to EMS. So when that uh, citizen calls 911, they're going to get the absolute best service equipment attitude that they can possibly get. Okay. Chief, are all five stations equipped the same, or do you have one station as this is their expertise, another station that's their expertise, so you can kind of dynamically flow as situations come up in the city? Uh, they're somewhat different. Um, we don't have uh, teams per se. I mean, we have some specialties. Um, that's something I'd like to look at in the future. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have hazardous materials responses, but that's county run. Mm -hmm. And um, we have confined space, and uh, we have people that are well-versed in ropes. But um, we need to get more people trained, and we will be doing that in the uh, near future. Okay. With the five stations, your staff, what are the core services that you provide to the community? Core services, obviously, our number one run is EMS. So when I say EMS, everybody thinks of ALS, which is Advanced Life Support or Advanced Life Support mm -hmm. System. 
And then we have BLS, which is basic life support. So of our 66 firefighters that we have working, we have three shifts, there's 22 on per day. Um, we have 32 paramedics scattered throughout the city. So we have approximately 10 or 11 or 12 working um, every day. Mm -hmm. Our paramedic units have two paramedics on each unit. So there's a minimum of six, usually more though throughout the city, okay. um, you know, on staff. Um, so that's our number one run. That's the basic thing that mm -hmm. we do. Um, but we're a fire department, so we also do fires, sure. but fires are a small percentage of what we do. Um, building construction has mm -hmm. gotten better. Communications and IT have gotten better. Um, apparatus is better. Our equipment's better. All those things are better now than when I came on 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And all that uh, adds to our speed of response. So, you know, I'm, dispatchers used to get a telephone call on a dial phone and then used to go to a dispatch center that would plug in similar to what you'd see in an old World War II mm -hmm. movie where the operators are plugging lines in. I saw that happen in Milwaukee. Wow. I actually, we actually had that. So that doesn't exist anymore. Right. It's computers and uh, the dispatchers, I give them a lot of credit. They have to be right 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are, <laughs> I don't know how they do it, but they are. And they dispatch us, and, but it's with a computer and it's a lot quicker than it ever was before. So. Um, we get our fire runs, and that's about 2 to 3% of our responses. But we do a lot of things besides those two things. <laughs> um, we do, you know, hazardous materials responses. We do um, assist invalids. Uh, we basically anything that the police department can't handle. If they need a fire department, you know, somebody to take care of it, will come floods, lockouts, sure. um, things like that. We do just about everything but a lot of what we do during the day is education and training and keeping ourselves sharp so that when we do get the call we're ready to go okay thank you for that explanation uh, with your makeup of calls you know let's say on a monthly average <clears throat> you said you know fire calls are maybe two to three percent of your total calls where mm -hmm. most is your mm -hmm. ems or health related you know services to sure. the community sure on an average let's say on a month what would you say your call volumes would be roughly well, Roughly last year, we had about just over 5,200 runs total per year. So, you know, divide that by 12. Sure. I don't know what you'd come up with, but that's approximately what we'd have. Okay. Um, would that be about, not 500, between well, maybe 450 total. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the history of, you know, the medical part of the fire department, do volumes, do you see them staying the same or have they been, you know, increasing, decreasing, or would you say it's pretty much a level you know, type of a volume? Since I've gotten to Sheboygan, obviously I did some research sure. to find that out, actually preparing to uh, mm -hmm. interview for the position. Um, the runs here have gone up. Our runs have increased pretty much every year for the last several years, and, but the big increase has been in EMS. Okay. So uh, I'd say it's on the rise. Uh, not, a, not drastically, but it is rising, and I expect that to continue in uh, the near future. In your runs, you know, you have fire versus the medical part. What are the average response times for the department? Uh, because we have five stations, it's very good. And in the fire service, it's all about speed. Right. I, on our uh, service, it's all about speed. The quicker we can get to a building, if there's a fire or situation, the smaller the fire is, and the less we have to do, and the quicker we can put it out and mitigate that situation. So, and the same is true for um, EMS. You know, if somebody's having a heart attack, you know, you can't get there soon enough. Right. So it's seconds matter. They really do. Even in a fire, you know, when I came through the academy um, 30 years ago, I was taught that a fire doubles in size every 17 seconds. Wow. And I think that's pretty much true based on my experience as a chief and standing on the outside and mm -hmm. watching that fire develop, you know, through the windows and the smoke changing and things and going from you know, room and contents to two rooms to 50% of a floor to 100% to two floors to the building to other buildings. You know what? I'd say that's pretty accurate. Some people will disagree, and um, it's been argued that it might even be faster because building construction has changed a great deal in the last, you know, 30, 40 years, and there's a lot more truss, lightweight construction. Sure. Uh, a two by four isn't a two by four anymore. Yeah. It's, you know, it's one and seven eighths by. Yeah you know, three and three quarters, yep. or, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? And, sure. And it, the, it's not true lumber. Some of it's fabricated and milled. And so there's all kinds of things. So if you look at a room and contents, um, 
from before, from let's say 30, they call that a legacy construction. <laughs> you look at legacy compared to modern construction and you light a fire in, furnished in the same way but with modern materials Correct. compared to old. Um, an old. An old room might flash in four or five minutes, whereas modern construction might be two minutes or three minutes, thereabouts. Okay. So that's important. Definitely. <coughs> Excuse me. I know working when I used to work in the healthcare industry as mm -hmm. IT, mm -hmm. you know, in working with the clinical or medical staff, you know, mm -hmm. that's in the training that we had, even though we were support services, we were still known. And that's one thing that they also, um, emphasized is the amount of time seconds can matter. You know, yeah. if somebody is having a heart attack, a stroke, or any type of a condition where, you know, seconds count. It does. You know, It absolutely does. And then when you get there, you know, now we can control everything that yeah. happens. And, you know, then, then the equipment, the training, uh, you know, the attitude, uh, that all kicks in. The experience, <laughs> all of those things come together. And in, uh, in our department, I think we're very, very successful at what we do because of uh, our people and the training that mm -hmm. they have. Okay. You had mentioned with dispatching, you know, things are more efficient with mm -hmm. technology and the equipment. <clears throat> sure. Fire department is dispatched through the same dispatch center, the city county dispatch center is what police are, so that makes it all tied together nicely mm -hmm. as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. How do you see, I know this is kind of a curve, Chief, but you know, the whole combined dispatch, mm -hmm. do you see that improving services? Overall, yes, I'd say it will. It's already happening now. Um, we have, even though we have separate centers, um, we're right on the cusp of becoming a combined dispatch center, truly county, city. And um, equipment is being installed, it's being purchased. Um, uh, the plan that was set years ago is being put in place right now and it will, I believe, benefit in a, in a better, faster, more efficient uh, dispatch center with better trained people, with better equipment. And, Overall, I think we're going to be very well served by that combined system. And like I said, it's happening mm -hmm. right now. Okay, excellent. I know you had mentioned about technology and how enhancements have been made. We've mm -hmm. become more efficient. Mm -hmm. Could you go in a little bit more, let's say, you know, in fire and ambulance, you know, the, the, I know we have the IT equipment, you know, the computers and the communications, mm -hmm. what you can do, but there's also improvements on the basic equipment that they use on the scene as well. Could you go into how some of that has improved over the years? Oh, absolutely. I, I alluded to that before right. where <laughs> I went to the dispatch center as a, a, a rookie or a cub firefighter and I saw the dispatchers plugging mm -hmm. things in like I remember seeing in old movies in World War II era. Um, that stuff, obviously, that's long gone. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of equipment, probably our number one area other than dispatch is um, our uh, EMS equipment, our ALS equipment. We have monitors, that's a separate unit that's very uh, highly technical, and our defibrillators, which are um, you know, what we use to shock people, hook them up, and we check their, um, their heart rates and things. Uh, those things didn't even exist you know, 15, 20 years ago, or they were just getting started. Um, when I was a young person, I used to watch Emergency, that uh, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. with Cage and DeSoto, yep. I, think, I think that was their names, but, you know, they were paramedics and they, you know, there was always something big going on, but, um, and they had that type of equipment, but that was, you know, one of the first departments to do that. Um, we have it now, it's changing right now as I speak, we're looking at the next generation. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it is required by our medical director, the doctor that runs our program here in the county, insists on you know, an upgrade to that equipment. So sometimes our hands are tied, but in a good way, sure. we need to keep increasing that technology. And, you know, that's your area. We've worked together a lot yep. and you've been very, very helpful to me. And um, uh, we can't get by without the technology today. And it's changing all the time. I mean, more, I think more in your area than any area there, you know, I mean, a computer mm -hmm. today that's uh, modern and ready to be used and it's great, in a month, it's uh, not right. obsolete, but it, there's something sure. new that's even better. And it's hard to keep up and there's a lot of overlap and things and it's very difficult mm -hmm. and we appreciate what no, you do for us. You're definitely way. welcome. It's an honor to be part of that whole system. Thank you. Um, you know, like with our fire and emergency services, it's almost like you're an extension of the hospital or they're an extension of you, especially with the technologies and equipment you use, you can be sending information right to them or then mm -hmm. back to you directly. Mm -hmm. How does that help in the quality? Of, what? The, of the care of the service. A great deal. Uh, questions don't have to be re-asked. You know, that information is instantaneous. Um, 
everybody works better, faster. Um, because of that, uh, people get better care, and that care, you know, they're diagnosed properly sooner, mm -hmm. and then they're given treatments um, that are necessary or might uh, help them from, uh, prevent them from, you know, being injured in the future or rehabilitating. Stroke is a classic example. Mm -hmm. If we know somebody is a stroke patient, there's certain drugs that be given, can be given to them, but they have to be diagnosed properly. And then as soon as they get in, they have to be treated with the proper sure. drug. Well, that doesn't happen 30 years ago. Right. It just doesn't happen. Today it does, and that's just a tremendous thing. Um, stints or heart problems, if there's a blockage in an artery in the heart, if that's known, the, the big push today is to get you know, people from the field, their homes, into the cath lab sure. as soon as possible. And that's a big drive right now, and hospitals are coming way down in that. Well, if they do that, that means that that artery is open again, and the heart's back not to maybe normal, but it's open, and they don't suffer any lingering consequences. Yep. Blood so, is flowing, so they right. can avoid that. Those are just two examples right. where our speed and tech, the speed of technology and working together with a partner mm -hmm. like the hospitals, it all comes together, and everybody's better off today in 2014 yeah. than they were in you know, 1960 or sure. 50, 70 or whatever. And obviously with you know, technology changing so rapidly and the way we're trying to change and keep up to date, mm -hmm. also there's medical procedures that change you know, as well that they mm -hmm. come out with this. You know, like you said, now an aspirin for a stroke, possibly if it's diagnosed correctly or other advanced services that mm -hmm. you provide. What type of training does the paramedics have to go through to stay on top of their skills and what types it's, of training programs do you have? It's unbelievable. Um, <laughs> Are, you know, I'm an EMT. I'm currently, am, I have a, mm -hmm. I'm a, currently an EMT. And, uh, you know, when I went through, it was, you know, a few hundred hours of training, like maybe, I think, 200 or something. A paramedic, it's, I don't even know what it is today. It's like 1,400 or 1,600 mm -hmm. or whatever. It's six months, eight months of training and experience and ride-alongs and, you know, um, doing the procedures, intubations and starting IVs and, and pushing drugs with the doctor's permission and talking, you know, there's so much involved in that. It's such a high level of skill. Um, it's unbelievable. And a training is nonstop. Procedures yeah. change, technology changes, equipment changes, protocols change, um, uh, apparatus changes. It, it, it's nonstop. It's going on all mm -hmm. the time. So they have, there's training. It's year round. Yeah. You know, and our, our EMS, our BLS people also mm -hmm. have that training too. And we support our paramedics in the field also as much as possible. Yeah. This just came to mind to ask the question, so not that I'm trying to throw another curve no, at you or whatever, fine. but does the training and orientation with you know, the, your medical people, the EMTs, is there any coordination with, let's say, the emergency departments at you know, the local hospitals here like St. Nick or Memorial, Aurora, you know, where they would spend time in the ER room or at least partner or shadow and work on certain techniques so that, how should I say, extension of an arm one way or another, mm -hmm. you know, where they're working together more, does anything like that go on? Yes, that happens all the time. We have a great working relationship with the two hospitals in the city of Sheboygan, as well as uh, other hospitals sure. in, in the state even. Uh, Children's down in Milwaukee and Freighter in Milwaukee and Grafton and you know, we're, we're all over. So um, yes, and, and they're, they're, they know that by helping us, they're really helping themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, we listen to each other, a lot of it's communication. You know, something isn't right or if there's a, an issue or a problem, they come to us and um, it's very professional. It, it's all the bottom line is to make it the best for the patient and for the citizens. That's when we come to them or they come to us. That's always what's foremost in both of our minds. So uh, we have an excellent working relationship. I've met with the directors of both those hospitals, and uh, fantastic people. With that, they're mm -hmm. just driven to be the best, and uh, it's kind of hard not to follow along with that type of an attitude. Right. That's great. Switching over to the fire side, obviously there's training that has to go on there as well. And recently you had a training exercise with the buildings on the Shooker property mm -hmm. where you had, could you go into that as far as, you know, what that was all about and what you all did and the types of exercises you conducted? Sure. When I first got to Sheboygan, I met with my command staff. And uh, one of the people I met with was my battalion chief in charge of training, Keith Rissey. And he told me that he would, one of his goals that he would like to see our department achieve was to have some live fire training. Um, to his knowledge, I'm not saying it never happened. There might be somebody from years ago uh, that did it, but to his knowledge, as long as he's been in the department, there hasn't been any. And when we get a new firefighter, there are already paramedics. 
So um, they get put right on the paramedic unit. So when there's a fire, our med units do go, but the opportunity for them to get into the fire, like we talked about before mm -hmm. on an engine or a truck, um, isn't as likely. So we wanted to keep those skills up and that confidence level up. So we uh, pushed to do that. And because of other city departments like planning sure. and um, you know, even IT to an extent and uh, DPW and uh, so, you know, I'm not even, I'm just scratching the surface. Sure. They all helped us out and we put together, we were allowed to get the Shukert property building. There was a residence on there with mm -hmm. uh, no exposures around it. So it was very safe. And um, the city and um, my, the leaders in city government, the city uh, administrative officer, Jim Amodio, my, our mayor, uh, Mike Vandersteen, uh, they all were behind me and they helped make this all happen. Finance, uh, Kathy or uh, Nancy Buss. Um, so we put it together and we had this training and it turned out excellent. My training officer, Chief Rissy, did an excellent job, well prepared. We actually went down to Milwaukee to see, they do these types of things all the time. Sure. And we went down there and met with them and, and um, we looked at how they did things. We looked at uh, um, how they set them up and what the paperwork and administrative parts were like, the federal laws, the state laws, all those things. We followed all safety procedures and we were down there for um, a day of training and then we spent the day and we actually burnt the house down. Mm -hmm. And so it was good for our members, but we also had a chance to work with other uh, departments in the area. They brought in tankers for us because we had a backup water supply because mm -hmm. our primary water supply was uh, way off on Indiana Avenue and it's very far away, but we made that all work and with, uh, we couldn't have done it without their help. Right. So that was a, a big plus for us too, to mm -hmm. meet other departments and they helped us out and uh, you talk to them, you get to know what they're needs are too and um, so that was a real good uh, team building exercise for everyone. Well and that also supports the extending the arm so to speak with the other fire departments mm -hmm. in the county mm -hmm. where you can help back each other up and I believe it's at Mabus? Mabus right Mabus is an acronym standing for mutual aid box alarm system it started in Illinois in the 70s mm -hmm. they call the Illinois Mabus uh, mother Mabus and then it spread to the states around there and, and one of the first states was Wisconsin and now it's spreading around the country. I don't know how many states have it, but uh, almost all the counties in the state of Wisconsin out of the 72, I, I don't know, last count, there had to be 50 to 60, I think mm -hmm. that are either have it, are gonna have it soon, or are thinking about having it. So yeah, it's worked out very well. A lot of um, you know, people looking at consolidating dispatch centers and, sure. um, and, and, and telecommunication towers and frequencies and things like that, it's all, been addressed and looked at and picked apart and what's the best way, what's the, the safest way, what's mm -hmm. the most economical way to do it. So all those things are happening. I think a lot of it because of Mamus. And I think that's a great opportunity with, you know, speaking the story of doing more with less, mm -hmm. but more importantly, everybody's on the same page mm -hmm. and start to read each other if you have protocols, standard operating procedures, you know, train the same, the same techniques, Ex train on yeah. the same equipment. You know, it's almost like what the Coast Guard does. Absolutely. You know, on, on there, when they go out on a mission mm -hmm. to rescue somebody, everybody's trained in that position. So it doesn't matter what the crew or whoever comes in, they're trained the same. So it's right. like... And that's a great point. Time. You know, right, just a practical example is uh, we're looking to number um, all the rigs the same countywide. So a lot of times the city has their protocols and procedures in their you know, their history. And uh, the tendency is to want to stay that way. But um, I have a very open-minded command staff and I think department, this is one of the most open-minded departments mm -hmm. I've ever seen. And I've worked with, you know, big ones and little sure. ones. I've seen other departments and uh, they're like, what's going to be the best? So, you know, for example, you know, we're going to have a combined dispatch center, mm -hmm. county, city. Well, the county to make things better, they wanted us to use the, uh, the name city before any kind of communication city engine to responding to and give an address so sure. um, we're like you know what that's not gonna kill us to do right. that so let's do it so it's just a matter of city you know we put the mm -hmm. word city in front well that helps county dispatch know in the future you know it'll be seamless then so we're you know swiss cheese a little sure. bit every time a couple little holes here and there and then yep. eventually it'll um when it does start for real Boom. We'll, we'll be have right a block honest. of cheese with no yep. holes. Exactly. Excellent. Chief, could you go into briefly to some of the other educational programs that you do in the community? I know you got, you're in the schools, you know, you're in the community itself. You know, you're also doing commercial building inspections, you know, mm -hmm. where you're promoting, 
you know, fire safety or educational safety. Could you go in briefly to some of those types of activities? Sure. The, the biggest one, I think, and the one that we're most proud of is our school education programs. Uh, we have different programs for kindergarten through third grade. So we have four separate programs, all geared to that age level and all that they build on each other. So um, that's a wonderful program. And our firefighters go out every fall. We just finished. Mm -hmm. They just got done uh, going out to schools. And we visit um, all those schools, um, public and private, K through four. Nice. And, um, and you need to start young. Yep. You now the time not to teach somebody to be fire safe is when they're young and in the formative years when they're learning and, and, and building those values and beliefs, don't play with matches. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a problem, go tell an adult, don't be afraid. Go tell the adult, you know. Um, what do you do if, you, if your clothes catch on fire? What do you do if there's a fire in your house? Mm -hmm. You know, those are all the different things that kids need to know and it never fails with those programs there's somewhere you never know directly how you've affected somebody or if it mattered but somewhere down the line I'll get a call or one of my chiefs will get a call and tell me you know so-and-so I just got a call from a citizen you know she's in her 30s and mm -hmm. she remembers going through there and when her you know kids clothes caught on fire they, she laid them on the ground and wrapped them up in a blanket and didn't let them run around and things like that. You hear that, so that's very a very positive mm -hmm. message. So that was the biggest yep. one. But we also do many other things, and well, you know, building inspections yep. for fire safety. Um, that's huge, and um, it's we're not. Uh, it's all about safety. It's right. all about preventing fires. And um, when you get into duplexes, you know, you're in a you're in a building, but there's two separate units. Well, what you do in your unit affects somebody else. Mm -hmm. So if you're not fire safe in your lower unit Absolutely. and a fire starts, now entrances are blocked or exits are blocked. You can't get out. Now, you know, it matters. Mm -hmm. So whenever we're into a house for an EMS run, which is most of our runs, we look for working smoke detectors. And, um, and we're constantly yep. looking and upgrading. And a big thing is, having a working smoke detector in your home. So yep. that's just another example of what we do. Yep. I remember being in school, you know, the, like you said, K through four, and it was always the time of the year fire prevention week. And that was always fun because then we all drew our posters of, you mm -hmm. know, the fire prevention and we had a contest mm -hmm. and we always had visitors on and sure. the same type of things, you know, were talked about then. So that yeah. was really cool. Yes. Um, Chief, it's about time for us to wrap. So any final comments you'd like to make? No, I just wanted to, you know, the topic of this program is called quality of life. And in Sheboygan, obviously fire and police protection is very important, but it's really a team effort with all the city departments. Um, there's a lot of what we do that we couldn't do without like your help or DPW or the police or really almost mm -hmm. every entity in the city. If uh, they weren't there for quality of life, they wouldn't even exist. If okay. they weren't needed, they wouldn't be there. So thank you for having nope, me. I you. really appreciate uh, yeah. you inviting me. Thank you. No, nope, definitely. Chief, I want to thank you. Um, for, you know, for taking the time out of your busy day um, mm -hmm. to join us and talk about, you know, fire quality of life, medical quality of life, how it affects us. So definitely thinking about that. It was a very informative conversation, you know, so again, I thank you. If anybody has questions about something we talked about today or if there's a topic you'd like to see, you know, on the show in the future, by all means contact us and you can get us to us from our website at WSES Sheboygan. Dot com. Uh, for Quality of Life, I'm Dave Augustine, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.